When I first decided to study computer science in college, it's because my friend in high school told me that you can make a lot of money doing it. And when he said that, I thought he meant $100,000. But as we know now, software engineers are paid a lot more than that, with some high-level software engineers making between three and $500,000 a year. And ever since it's become popularly known that you can make a lot of money from coding, a lot more people want to learn how to code, naturally. And nowadays, it's really not that difficult. When I was first learning to code, there was only a fraction of the resources that now exist today on the internet available. And with the amount of resources out there today, it is much, much easier to actually learn how to code. And yes, of course, I'm talking about video content, video courses, and interactive tutorials, but I'm also talking about artificial intelligence. Now I'm aware the ChatGPT hype has died down a little bit, but we need to understand how valuable this tool is when it comes to coding, not only coding, but also learning to code. If I was learning the code from scratch today, I would be using ChatGPT the entire time almost as a second brain. But before I get into that, I do wanna mention the sponsor of this video, which is an extremely popular and valuable resource for when it comes to learning how to code, and that is Zero to Mastery. Zero to Mastery is an online platform and it has over 58 courses in a multitude of different categories. When you're learning how to code, you're gonna usually want to explore multiple different paths and try different things. And some of the things that you learn in different skill sets and different categories are going to come together for the final career that you end up getting. So Zero to Mastery is great because they've got courses in pretty much everything. You could try coding, you could try machine learning, you could try Web3, you could try cybersecurity business. They have soft skill courses, like you could try everything. And they just recently added a course on ChatGPT and LLMs, which is pretty relevant to this video. So if you're interested in that, maybe check that out after. And what's really cool is they have this career path quiz where you answer questions about your background and your goals, and it will actually give you a path to help you learn the skills that you'll need based on your goals. I've worked with them on one sponsorship before, and everybody that signed up had really positive experience. So if you're interested, Zero to Mastery is a great place to learn how to code. Go into the description of this video, click the link, and check them out. And now let's get back to talking about how we could use ChatGPT alongside all of these resources like online courses and video tutorials to learn how to code. So believe it or not, a ton of people use ChatGPT to code. Like everyone I talk to that codes is using ChatGPT in some way. There is still a lot of people that don't, but I would say that generally somebody with a lot of experience is probably incorporating it into their workflow a little bit. So if you're curious, why would we use this chat GPT AI to help us code? Well, there's a few reasons. One of them is the instant feedback you get. So if I talk to ChatGPT, it's going to respond to me instantly. It's also very interactive and dynamic. It's not like a static resource where it's just text and it's all always the same. Like depending on how I communicate to ChatGPT, it will communicate back or respond back in different ways. And that's what's really great because it is very adaptable. So whether you're a beginner or an expert, you can communicate with ChatGPT and as long as you give it context, it's gonna understand and it's going to help you out. So how would we use ChatGPT to learn how to code, right? If I don't know how to code or I want to pick up a new programming language, how is this going to help me as opposed to just learning on my own on some tutorial or website? Well, there are multiple reasons I'll go into, but generally I would just think of it as almost like a second brain or like a fallback if you get stuck. I think that is the absolute best use case for it when you're learning to code, when you don't understand something, when you need help debugging, when you get completely stuck on something, when you're just confused, you have now something that can spit you back answers. You could change your question in 50 different ways. And finally, you have a resource that's gonna give you an answer and probably help you understand and then you can move forward. You know, before ChatGPT, when it's programming and there's something you don't understand, you're gonna just Google your question over and over. And sometimes the questions can get pretty niche and people don't have forums or threads explaining every single thing. So you're gonna be looking links and links and links. You're gonna be trying to find, does anyone know the answer to this? I'm stuck here, I need to debug this. But now we have ChatGPT. And ChatGPT, if you explain all of the context of what you're going through, it's usually going to be able to answer your question and help you out, help you get past the roadblocks. For me, this is an extremely powerful tool. If I'm learning to code from scratch today, I'm using this when I have a roadblock or I'm stuck mentally and I can't get past something. You know, people didn't have a resource like this a few years ago that could help them when they're stuck. You know, you're either gonna post on Stack Overflow or Reddit or somewhere else and just hope that somebody is gonna help you out. So that is pretty invaluable in my opinion. So there's a few reasons to use this when you're learning how to code, right? I said debugging help. So 
you give it a snippet of code that's not working, right? Like it's broken. It's like, I'm getting errors. I don't understand. You could paste the error and it will usually be able to explain this and even spit back working code for you. Another thing would be concept clarification, right? Maybe you don't understand some words or you just don't understand a general idea. You could give it that information like, hey, I don't understand this because this, and you can get really detailed. Like, I don't even know what this word means. I'm confused because of this. And it usually can understand and give you an explanation that you can understand. It's like, you can talk to it like a person. So that is pretty cool. Another really cool thing ChatGPT does is real-time code samples for concepts. You know, there's a lot of scenarios where you'll be watching an online video or a video course. You're in college, you're reading a textbook. They'll be talking about concepts or trying to teach you concepts. And you'll be like, well, I wonder what that looks like in code but maybe they don't cover that. Maybe they don't like give you code samples and you're like, well, I wish they gave me code samples. That would help me understand way better. Just pull up ChatGPT like, hey, they're teaching me about recursion, but they're not showing me enough code samples. Can you give me some code samples for recursion? Or maybe they're talking about multi-threading and you're like, hey, can I have a code sample for multi-threading? They're not giving me code samples. I need multiple code samples. So that's pretty awesome. If code samples are going to help you learn and understand concepts, you now have this resource that can generate them easily. And then I guess last but not least is you could do like code checks for best practices or like any errors and stuff. You could kind of just give ChatGPT some code like, hey, is this messy? Is this messed up? Is there anything wrong with this? And it can give you advice or help you. Now, ChatGPT, let's be clear, does make some mistakes. You should not rely on this for everything. I have gone down rabbit holes. I've been using this thing for months and months now. And sometimes I get too reliant. I'll be like, okay, just copy and paste, copy and paste. And then I'll just keep getting errors. I'll be like, hey, fix, fix. And I just think it's gonna fix it eventually, but I'm not really reading or understanding it. And sometimes it doesn't know what's going on and you need to slow down and you need to think. You can't use it as your main brain. You should use your main brain and then this is like a second hand brain or like a backup is like how I would think about it. You know, just think of it as a helping AI because that is literally what it is. It's an AI tool built to help us. So just so you guys don't think I'm like gassing this thing up too much. Let me show you an example where I'm trying to do Arduino programming, but I don't even know what's going on. So it's like, hey, I'm doing Arduino programming. Uh, can you give me a hello world basic application? So I can literally just copy this, paste it into the IDE and press run and see if it works. So it actually gives you like a bunch of explanations. Like I said, you should read this and make sure you know what's going on. It tells me where to plug in the wires and all of that stuff. But what I'm actually doing in addition to this is I'm looking at the documentation. Like I already wired everything. I don't need to know where the wires are. I just wanted the basic setup. I want ChatGPT to kind of be alongside me as I build my project. I guess one more thing I'd say for advice is just like make sure you and ChatGPT are on the same page, right? If ChatGPT is giving you the explanation that you're reading somewhere else and you understand and everything's on the same page, that's a good sign. I said my Arduino code won't work. What's the issue? It gives me all of these different things that I didn't even think about. You know, there's a couple of things I didn't think about. And actually I was giving errors to ChatGPT and the problem was I needed to unplug and unplug it. If the connection, it was just not plugged in well. Basically, what you're going to want to do when you're using ChatGPT is you're going to want to be specific. Give it specific questions. Give it context to what you're thinking, what's going on in your mind. Give it the context. When it's a big problem, like a really big one, you want to break that down into smaller problems so it has a better time understanding and can give you more precise answers. And then when you get the answers, when it gives you these bulk answers on ChatGPT, you need to understand what's going on. You need to practice, maybe try to learn something with ChatGPT and then try and implement it yourself. Don't look at ChatGPT and if you need help, go back. So yeah, I just wanna make this video spread how you can use this to learn how to code. People that are trying to learn how to code nowadays, this is one of your most valuable resources in my opinion. I've been using it for months every day. All my friends use it. The hype has died down on social media, but that's not how the world revolves around social media. You know, Just because something's not trending doesn't mean people aren't using it anymore. Um, I'm still using it. I think you guys should use it for sure, whether you're coding or whether you're learning how to code. With a combination of this tool as basically a way to get past any roadblocks or explain things you don't understand, 
as well as other resources. Like I definitely recommend doing traditional resources like tutorials, like interactive tutorials step by step that are going to structure and lay out things, right? ChatGPT is not going to develop a full fledged tutorial in the best, most structured way for you. But with a combination of these two together, that is going to be the most efficient way right now to learn how to code. So I'd love to know how many of you guys are still using this in your workflow now that it's not trending on social media as much every day. And also thank you guys again for watching this video and supporting the channel. I'd appreciate the like and subscribe if you're new here and I'm getting back on the content grind and trying to post more consistently again. So thanks for watching and I always appreciate your support. I should be posting another video in a few days, so I will see you then. Till then, peace.